call the town hall school admin building committee to order. First item on the agenda will be the roll call. When I call your name, please stay here or present. Diane Allen. Present. Kevin Kyra. John Doherty here. Jesse Fenley. You muted yeah. again, Glenn. Here, here. He's here. <laughs> Jack Holloway. Here. Dennis. Yes, he's here. I'm here, George. Sorry. It's okay. Thanks, Jesse. <laughs> Dennis Kelly. Here. Paul Melarani. Here. Paul Ruggiero. He here. Here. Speaker Control. Glenn Brand. Here. Steve Turner. Here. George Cooper. I'm here. <laughs> also here is our OPM, Dan Pilata, Tom, Tom Manager, Luz Semeglia. Tony, a CMR, and Phil. All right. Everybody had the opportunity to review the minutes from December 13th. Any discussion? Make a motion to accept the minutes. I have a motion to accept the minutes. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made by Jack Holloway, seconded by John Doherty. Take a roll call vote. Diane Allen? Yes. John Doherty? Yes. Jesse Finley? Jack Holloway? Yeah. Yes. Made a motion. <laughs> Dennis Kelly? I'm staying out of that. Paul Melarani? Yes. Paul Ruggiero? Yes. Glenn Brandt? Yes. I, I wasn't at the, well, I was remote on that one, so. I vote yes. All right. Paul did a great job at that meeting, too, I've got to say. <laughs> it, was, it was refreshing. <laughs> it was refreshing. <laughs> Can I mute this? <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, status update on project with the OPM. Dan? So uh, from a schedule standpoint, we're looking at uh, file sub bid process beginning the uh, first week of February, and we're still on target for that. Uh, with the file sub bids coming in towards the end of February, and hopefully have a GMP shortly thereafter, almost identical to the schedule that we published way back to town meeting. I mean, we're we're, we're keeping the schedule. Uh, so uh, from from that standpoint, that's where we are. The, the documents are between uh, between the seventy five percent and complete hundred percent at this point in time, and you know we're just dotting our eyes, crossing our t's on a whole bunch of stuff. So that's where we are on the project as a whole. Uh, budget wise is uh, I know we're going to be well, talking about that, that next. in a little bit, but as far as scheduling moving forward, as far as construction, uh, groundbreaking, we're still looking like we're on target. We're still looking at the uh, end of March, the first week of April. So we've moved it. Uh, not not really. I mean, we we're always in March. Yes, I knew that. Uh, it'll it'll depend on how fast that consignment uh, mobilizes and gets started. Uh, we're still waiting on uh, the final permit uh, from conservation, and uh, we, you know, we, you know, we need to have the GMP agreed upon and signed. That's a question here. <clears throat> Initially, we thought it was March first, where the staging was going to go up and so forth. Mm -hmm. If that's deviating at all. Um, we could go that sooner rather than later from the standpoint. So we have um, voting at the high school March 5th, which if, if we're down to 150 spots, mm -hmm. but if we're not down to 150 spots because construction has not started yet, that changes some of our planning. Um, I don't anticipate that we'll, we'll have a fence up on March 5th. Okay. Okay. So I can tell you that out of the gate. Okay. okay. Did you guys meet with planning and conservation? Uh, was conservation, we had our first meeting. Uh, they asked for some more information uh, and asked us a round of questions. We had uh, uh, 
uh, Ahmad is asking questions, and we um, the, the team has put together you know some of the answers and got it the agent. And when's the next camera? I think it's right? Yeah, I think it's I think it's February fifth. February fifth will be this the next camera. You can see that in the center. I'm going to look it up. What hearing is that again, George? On Farm. Farm Farm? Okay. We are not uh, required to go to planning. Well, okay. Just like the senior center, we're exempt. Okay. Can I have one follow up question on that? Absolutely. In the fencing, I'm just, just for my planning purposes. So initially, it's March 1st. So now, any ballpark when it might be up because we have to to now the students I may mean, not all be able to park over there and so mm -hmm. forth. So talking March eleventh, March eighteenth, what do you think? I know it's difficult, but uh, 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 let me get back to you. Okay. okay. On that, I will get you an answer by Wednesday. That's cool. Yeah, that's fine. I, I don't want to mislead you. Yeah, no, that's fine. An empty parking lot for an extra week. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'll try and nail okay. it down to a date. It really will depend on uh, it's really going to depend on the files and data. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Well, we'll communicate. Our OPM will be talking to me, so we'll make okay. sure that you guys. Are yeah, right. I, 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 I sense the urgency. Yeah. No, just from planning purposes, it's a little bit. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Okay. There's no further discussion. Discussion with the OPM on the project budget. The possible vote. So uh, the 75% estimate had come in. Um, there was, I think, a million eight higher than our budget. Um, the team has worked back and forth tirelessly to scrub the numbers, make sure that we get the quantities right, make sure that our units are right, uh, and we're, we've got it down to. Uh, you want to bring that up? Yeah, just... we can. You want to bring up Phil's presentation? But we got it down to thirty-two million. Uh, we got a little more to go. We have some VE items we want to discuss as a group and get some uh, positive votes. None of, the, none of the VE items we think affect uh, the quality of the project or the scope of the project. We're not cutting space. We're not doing anything like that. Just. Some different materials and things of that nature. So, um, would like to just do a quick <clears throat> PowerPoint if we can. So, just to be clear, we originally uh, budgeted uh, thirty-one million five hundred thousand. Thirty-one million. Actually, it's thirty-one million nineteen thousand. So, I, I, my, I, I made the error on that. Uh, he did. Sorry about that. Um, which is an error that I, I picked up. That he picked up on a carriage and on this slide. So, so I had to just, so just understand it's thirty one million nineteen thousand is what we carry in our estimate for appropriation. So we put together a slide here that has the, the target thirteen million five. Um, it makes the picture down at the bottom look a little rosier than it really is. Um, and uh, really where we're at is instead of over by about 500,000, we're over by about a million. Um, we've identified um, about 600, 600 and, 687,000 dollars. This number has also been changed because like, everybody correct my numbers today. <laughs> all, all the assumptions when I when I put in draft numbers is off. If you'd like me to help, uh, so show you the so just so the one understands, we work on this stuff every day, and we know that the committee wants material twenty four hours in advance. So we give you the current information twenty four hours in advance. All right. So the subject matter is the same, but the numbers are going to change a little bit. So we want you to understand why the numbers aren't the same. All right. Yep. So we're, we're we're still trying to polish these things a little bit. Um, this is based on some conversations that we had when we were talking with Consigli, and you'll recall we did a third party estimate as well with PM and C, and they were very helpful. And Consigli was very uh, accommodating to uh, work with us on that through both of those estimates. And basically, what happened is, is that the PM and C estimate actually came up a little bit, and the Consigli estimate came down a little bit, and we ended up pretty close at the end. Um, and that's pretty much where this where this number is right now. Um, and a little bit over. So basically, we need to um, find some ways to kind of get us back on track. 
Um, didn't get all the way there here. This shows where, um, actually, if you took all of these, you'd be a little bit under. Um, but because these numbers have been adjusted, it's a little closer to still being a little bit over. So we've identified a number of items, and these are probably the more important things to talk about is these things in, uh, in, in what they mean for the project. And the first one was, um, was uh, the well, but before we get too far into the Dan, I just want to ask we also have built into this project our contingencies, also, correct? Mm -hmm. So, so we have contingencies, and the general contractor has contingencies, correct? So, the general contractor has contingencies in this budget, and we have contingencies for the entire project budget, which includes FF and E uh, technology and and you know, and, and any unknowns that would not be covered by. The general contract is contingency. And ballpark on those contingencies? Um, do you remember what the contingency is? Three percent. Yours is three percent. It was six hundred and eighty thousand. I think was it was. I think he's got six hundred and eighty or seven hundred thousand in his. Right. And we have uh, approximately approximately a million. All right. So one point six. We'll just call it that. Yeah. Okay. So some of these things we, we know that here could be a potential alternate. So if the numbers come in good on bid day um, with the trade bids that are that are due earlier, and then with the GMP, you can potentially pull some of these things back in. Other things don't make good alternates, um, and it really would you need to make a decision on that. Um, and the trickiest one here is is one that we already talked about once before. The last time we did BE. And we decided we could probably get away with um, with it the way it was. You'll recall that the soffit on the building, the upper portion of the building, um, uh, and then the underside of the overhang is uh, GFRC. Um, that's going to look the most like the cast stone that we have elsewhere. And, um, and um, we could do it with cement panels. Now, given the height of it, it's probably not going to make a big, big difference. I would say from the ground. The biggest difference you'll see is that cement panels are actually a rain screen system and they and they have open joints. And so you'll see that you'll see that dark joint rather than mortar or ceiling joint. Um, but it's going to be hard to see from the ground. Um, so but the material and the installation cost can save you a considerable amount. The number that we've got just today basically is about two hundred thousand dollars for that It's GFRC plaster reinforced yeah. concrete. Okay. So it's a thin fiberglass reinforced uh, concrete oh, panel. Yeah. Um, it looks a lot like concrete. It weathers like concrete. It's a lot lighter, and so it's easier to do for something. But it's still a lot heavier than cement panels. Yeah, right. it's heavier. Heavy. Yeah, a cement panel is going to be like three eighths of an inch thick, whereas this is going to be like an inch, inch and a quarter, maybe a little thicker at the joints or the corners. Um, so you know. A four foot panel. Two guys might be able to. 150 pounds. Two guys can kind of muscle it into place. Yeah. With this material, one person can probably do the same way. Yeah, they both cement. And it, uh, they both have the same low maintenance surface. You don't really need to worry about it. Uh, you don't need to paint it, treat it. Um, the cement panels, because they don't have anything in the joints, yep. probably means you have, you have less maintenance in the long run. You won't, be, you won't need to maintain those joints either. So I guess you need to. We wouldn't even suggest it, but we, 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 Phil and I just finished the project with it and it didn't look spectacular. It looks really good. I could probably find some photographs. I didn't come prepared to show up, but I could probably find examples of the two different things in a similar situation if anybody wants. Phil, before you get too far, I know we have a question. But... Phil, um, where the joints aren't filled in, is that allow insects and stuff to get in? No, the panels have a have a girt system that covers over the joint okay. so, that, so that it drains. Okay. You're not really going to have a bug problem that's designed for that. Okay. And I know we discussed this before, previous meetings. We did discuss it, and we were thinking that we could still maintain the, you know, the GFRC, and it just it's just something that's a little above our um, costs. I mean, I just don't... I. My concern on it isn't even the GFRC. My concern on it is the structural steel behind it. Uh, this goes on light gauge framing. Right. And you know, everything's built out of light gauge framing. You see it every day. And it lasts 
because it's galvanized. Uh, the, the miscellaneous is a file sub bid trade. It is just a wild card in what you're going to get across. And if we, you know, anytime we can eliminate scope from file sub bidding, sub bidding we're doing everybody a service. Yeah. Right? This first one here, uh, I just want to touch on that again. We have been carrying cherry. Uh, and that's all the woodwork that we have in the hallways. It's for the doors themselves. It's for the casework that we have. So each of the reception desks of the different departments, the coiling door that comes down over that, the trim around it. Um, so there's a fair amount of cherry in the building. And we asked what the savings would be to do uh, birch. It's a very similar wood in terms of its hardness, in terms of the grain lines. And if you stain it, we've done it in the past. It looks a lot like cherry in a pillow sheet. It's a little bit of money. It's not as much money as I thought. Less than that. But we're not done. <laughs> um, window shades is one of those other things that we talked about is um, window shades are something that are pretty easy to install after the rest of the building is done. And so you could actually pull them out of the project and put them in the FFE budget. I think you probably still want to have them. But what that allowed you to do is get us down to where we need to be. And then you could actually add them back into the project later on when we, when we haven't spent all your contingency money yet. Um, because we're not planning on spending all the contingency money. Um, but we don't know that now, so we advise you to maintain that. Um, but you could add this back in and put it in and furnish some sluggish at a later date. And um, you may have some money left over, you could move into that line item. That's the same as we're suggesting here for camera and intrusion alarm systems. It's one of those things, again, I think we talked about the last time around. I think we decided, let's just let them put it in and get a number for it. Um, GGD engineers would actually suggest that you do the box and conduit now and then add it later, uh, take it off of the, off the state bid list, and then you get yeah, so up-to-date equipment a year and a half from now. We uh, we did this at the senior center. So the cameras and the uh, uh, the camera and the access system are independent of the actual general contract so that maintenance uh, you guys can get the systems you want that match the other buildings uh, because the system itself will be a lower threshold for purchasing. And when we, we go with the general contractor, we're not necessarily guaranteed to get your system. So <laughs> by just putting the conduit boxes in, uh, we can do the same on the, on the, on the town hall. This is something we probably would have done regardless of whether we had a budget problem or not. We probably would have pulled it at the last minute when we do our document with you. I asked just a question on that. That's cameras and swipe guys. Is yeah. That, that, I mean, have we, do we know how many we need and all that stuff? Have we gone over all that? So we, we have them on the, on the documents. Uh, we can get you a copy for your floor if you'd like just to, 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 to double check for you. Yeah, uh, it's been provided to the IT. So yeah. we've been reviewing it. And that's going Your to... IT and, and the town's, town's IT, IT have gone through it. Have you met with them on yeah. that stuff? Yeah. And we're going to have. Additional meetings also, just so everything is uh, everybody. They they had a hefty list. Mason T in little tile the quarters. This is one of those things again we talked about at the BE last time. We had actually suggested that instead of natural slate tile in the lobby area that we go to porcelain tile that looks like slate. And everybody loved the idea of this of the slate <laughs> and then asked us to put it in all the quarters. And so we did, um, but it's expensive. Um, and so the idea is to go back to what we had originally suggested, um, which is to do the porcelain tile in the lobby and then do the rest of the quarters in the So that's a savings based on the math that we did pulled out of the asset. Um, um, took some wallboard under the main stair. I don't know if we talked about that one the last time or not. But basically, you've got Three stairs in the building. The main stair is the decorative one that runs up to the middle of the building with um, slash wall in the door on it. Um, and when you walk into that and you're walking up the stairs, if you were to turn your head and look up, you're going to see the underside of the rise of the stairs ahead of the above. Paint um, the rise. And we're, we're suggesting Correct. we just paint those like we're doing in the other stairs rather than like you have a scroll. Right, just like a high school, like you have middle school. school. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. the drywall on there is kind of a nicety, which is one of the reasons that we put a lot of those. Um, it's not something that we, it's not a, not a big dollar, right? But 
And then the last one was is really a, is a correction. It's one of those things that that we talked about last time around, and it's still in the estimate. Uh, that big heavy cast stone base that we had all the way around the building on our drawings that was still on our drawings, right? Uh, and that was a mistake. And it should have been 12 inch pan in the meeting room. So it's, it's not very much of that at all. We, we really just have that band around the meeting room. Um, and then we just have uh, lenses on the front porch of the building. We had already discussed that in previous yeah. meeting. It's just, it was still in there because it still showed up my drawings. So this gets, this gets us pretty close. And I'm pretty happy about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, honestly, because we're not, we haven't sacrificed really anything. Yeah. The look of the building is going to be the same. You, Diane's entry is going to be the same. Uh, you know, everything about what we're doing is going to be the same, with the possible exception of the tile on the floors. And and that comes so late. That's something we can always adjust if, if we're not if we don't have a burn rate on the contingency. So I think you know I, I I think we're I think we're I think we're in a good place. We're not in a great place. Uh, I want to be in a great place. Tony wants to be in a great place. You know we didn't enjoy our meetings this week, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, and it was a good thing they weren't televised. <laughs> but I, I I will tell you that you know we're doing uh, we're doing what we're supposed to be doing on behalf of uh, the town of Wilmington. To try and keep this thing on track, we don't want to come back uh, for additional funds. And at this point in time, we don't see the need that that's going to happen. Now, the big caveat in all of this is file subdating. So we Tony can't control file subdating. I can't control file subdating, and Phil can't control file subdating. Right. We can control the scope of the file subdating, which we're trying to do, uh, but. We are hoping that we get good bids on when the file sub bids come in. We did not on the senior center, but a lot of time has changed and a lot of things have changed in the market since we bid the senior I've center. I've been asked that question. Yeah. Have you guys have seen it? We've seen it. I think Tony seen it too. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've got tremendous coverage on all of the major trades for the file sub bidding with the pre qualification that Paul did. <laughs> So, it's seven, eight, or nine. George helped. George helped. I have three qualified bidders each year. Yeah, the seven, eight, we have, and they're, they're all going to bid. So, we, we're we hopeful that we're going to hit the targets. I guarantee you some will be high and some will be low, but the total number, if that total number uh, is where it is or it comes down, we're in good shape on this project. And the, and the negotiation for the GMP is going to go uh, a lot easier. Would you agree? I, I agree. It's in striking, definitely within striking distance. And we have had very good results on recent um, trade bids, yeah. the results of trade bids, which means our estimates have been in line. Sam, I think the market was. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So that was the uh, budget discussion. I know we want to talk about the value of engineering. Uh, and would you be looking for us to vote on this or that this is the recommendation from the project team to, uh -huh. to keep to budget uh it's up to you guys as to whether you want to take our recommendations or not so this is one of the things that get gets brought to these committees uh as for discussion because as our opm has stated this is going to have a huge impact on the aesthetics of the look of the building but it does play a part on different things, you know, the DCT over the tile. Over the, VCT the, is, the VCT is the, the, to be honest with you, I think the only thing that's a visual change. Right. I don't think anyone in this room would notice the difference between GFRC and uh, the cement panel system. I really, I don't think you'd notice it. But going back to VCT was our original plan anyway. True. Uh, but we we, we also uh, have always made an effort mm -hmm. to do as upgrade. little maintenance as possible yeah. in the building. Well, and uh, VCT has a little more maintenance requirement than uh, the tile does. But I, I I don't want you to think that any of these are automatically ruled out. As the designer has just indicated, you know, as we get to certain points in the project, that, you know, we might be able to release some of these and. Negotiate yeah. with the with the general contractor to try and add some of these things back in. 
Well, VCT, I mean, uh, the, I know the public buildings department does a great job in the mm -hmm. buildings, maintaining it. Mm -hmm. I do know that in our four foyers of the buildings, where a lot of traffic comes through, we've gone terrazzo because of the wear and tear. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is one of the things that so our designer said we're going to keep it a porcelain tile, maybe transition to VCT in the corridors, right. and bathrooms leave them as tile. That's right. So we've got walk-off mats in the, in the vestibules. Right. So they're going to brush people's feet when they're coming in to help as cut down on them, yeah. right? In order to cut down on the on the salt and the sand and snow and rain that, are, that is coming in that's going to wear on your floor a little bit. And then when you come in into lobbies, we'll still have the tile there. Okay. So what does that number in that box change to now with the uh, the three million nineteen thousand dollar figure? Two hundred and uh, two hundred and twenty nine. Two twenty nine. Okay. Even. Oh, you're gonna make me do the math. <laughs> well, it's on this call, right? Which which number are you asking about? That number in the box. We've we've updated the. Uh, Thirty-one million dollar number. Yeah. Yes. So uh, instead of being two hundred fifty-one and one seventy-seven under, it's three hundred twenty-three four twenty-six oh. Three twenty-three four what? Four twenty-six. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's how far away we are from our target. Right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Because instead of being over by a half million, the way this slide says, we're over by close to a million. Because okay. I, I had to run. Are you sure that's right? And that number. You take these, subtract these two numbers. No, you're going to need four nine four nines. Hold on. GR nineteen. The GRNG suit number six. No, we took out the I calculated based on the whole thing. Gotcha. Gotcha. So those I was wrong. All right. Gotcha. It may be work. Well, go ahead. So that number's good. 323. Yeah. 323. Can I have a question on that? Underneath the subtotals, it'll back up the estimate. Another hundred and twenty-five thousand. What what is that? That's incorrect. Oh, basically what if you if I if I go back here. This is the cover sheets from the consignment and everything. If you take this, it's the raw number here, which is the total of all these categories 26, 8, 8, 2. Um, you take that and you compare it to this number down here, um, and then you do the math, it comes up to 19. Uh, after I put this in, Tony corrected me and, and, and reminded me that the general additional and general requirement numbers here, which is the bulk of this change here, those numbers don't change. So instead of being 19%, it's more like a, it's, a, it's a collection of these numbers right here. Yeah, it's 8.9. So it's it's 8.9. It comes up to 8.94. Yeah, that's what the reality of it is. But yes, the, the, there are there are layers upon layers above the trade numbers. Yeah. Any questions? Sure. Try Diane. Yeah. Um, so in these seven items that we looked at here on the potential reductions in value engineering, are those going to be in the, some of those, those items are going to be in the file subbits that are going out? That they'll, be, be they'll, they'll be bidding. Uh, alternates, deductive alternates. They're going to be, the base bid will be the voted, would you vote? The, okay. The upgrade will be an add alternate. An add alternate. Okay. For two of these items. Some of these things. Can't add alternate. Well, we say <laughs> alternate. Don't, don't say add or deduct. <laughs> but you don't you have you have to preposition them. You have to you, yes. we have to preposition, right? So it's it's the window shades what we're suggesting and the camera from the security system. Those are the those are the potential alternates. Window shades are not good, right? Sure. So, but I'm issue. It's really the, cam the, ca box. the camera and intrusion. I, I, I wouldn't be with it anyway. I would leave that out because you want a proprietary system. We want a proprietary system. In which case, I would just take it out. It wouldn't yes. be an alternate. It would just come off, and you would do it under your after sale. Well, we have a technology budget that includes cameras and swipes. Right. That's why we boosted the technology budget. I think it was anyway, Selectman anyway, Kyra that asked us to increase it. Technology changes but, during this time, so. 
Question. So the vote so far is for what now tonight? What are we looking at to to approve these um these these changes? These that these, uh, these changes. What I'd like to do is get a, a, a comprehensive vote to accept accept the recommendations mm -hmm. of the design team stated as items one through seven. John, I'll make that motion. I'll second that motion. All right, motion made by John Doherty, second by Paul Mulroney. This will require a roll call vote. Uh, do you want to just make sure there's no more discussion? Yeah, you have more this discussion. Is a question, so. The VCT is a tile going back to that cannot be an alternate. Uh, that can be an alternate. Could be. So yeah. should, is that because that's less than the two things that but again vote you, what we're voting on. What we're voting on is that this is going to become the base bid. Okay. Oh, base bid. Yep. The alternates, any item that is on here that can be an alternate, will add as okay. an alternate. We're not going to have more than four alternates because once you get to five. You lose interest and people start throwing numbers at it. So we want to. And once we see those numbers come in, if it's lower, then we can add it back into it. And if it's not an alternate, you can add it back in through change. Okay. Right. Okay. And we'll know. We'll know pretty much once we get. We're gonna. To we're gonna know. We're gonna know the day the file subdits come in. Okay. Where we're where we're where, where we're sitting. Okay. Any further discussion? Questions? No. No. Seeing none, I'll take a vote on this. Vote on the motion that's on the floor. Roll call vote. Diane Allen? Yes. John Doherty? Yes. Jesse Finley? Yep. Jack Holloway? Yes. Dennis Kelly? Yes. Paul Malarani? Yes. Paul Ruggiero? Yes. Myself, Joe Trooper. Yes. All right. Thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, the alternate. The so, alternate. Hey, 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 Glenn. Hey, Glenn. All right. Hey, Joe. We forgot, Glenn. I forgot. All right. What covers that? So, next meeting, Dan, when do you think we should have? Um, so we're, we're going to put together the list of alternates and have you guys determine the order of the alternates because the way alternates work under mass general laws is we have to take them in order so you may say let's take one and two or one two and three mm -hmm. so yeah. you know we, yeah. we can't go one four you can't cherry pick, you can't cherry pick. You used to be able to do that and it was great but those days are <laughs> all right. Inspector General, why is that? Something we want to do in February. Uh, yeah, but it's... no, before package goes out. Let's get prepared for packaging. Yeah, before it goes out, it's going to go with the bid. Yeah, you don't have to do that. Wait, two weeks. Two weeks. Are you two weeks. looking at January 31st? January 31st, January 31st it is. Well, we can, can we do it remote? I mean, it's just going to be a debate on the alternate. It shouldn't take long. It shouldn't take long. I don't, from your perspective. I know you don't like doing this. remote meetings, Mr. Chairman. Not. Just think of the amount yeah, of Yeah, it works. It does. Yeah. All right. I have no issue with that date. It is a town manager search committee. Mm -hmm. On meeting. Wednesday, yeah. the 31st? Yeah. 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 yeah, that night. What time? Six. Six. Uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, we could, we could come we if we do it remote. Can we do it? Remote? We, could do it. we could do it earlier. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't. I want to just check everybody's availability for that. So, that's something we could do. And it, it's not going to take long to review, right? No, I don't think it's going to take long. So, okay. and, and the team will prepare them, send them out to you guys to say yay and nay. We'll give you what we suggest the order is. Okay. But it really and truly is something you have to think about and decide as a group on behalf of the town. I could set up a five or five thirty Zoom meeting. Let's, be better. Let's do five so you're not rushing. Yeah. Five o'clock. Okay. Just checking for everybody else. Yeah, I'm good. All right.
And Judge, this would just be a, um, uh, a quick meeting in that we would be approving these alternates, is that it? We would do that. We'd approve the minutes of this meeting and then uh, uh -huh. move through us. We're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna approve, we're gonna make a suggestion on what the four outlets are, if we even have four. And we're going mm -hmm. to we're going to ask you to give us your preference because that'll be all the number one. Some people like to do the most expensive ones <laughs> first. Some people like to do the easy, the low hanging fruit first. So we'll we'll give you what the value of the alternate is, and and ask for your opinion. And you know you guys can deliver it. It's what's most desirable. Yeah. Pretty much. The, the, yeah. other, the other thing I, I advise people to think about is, is that sometimes things could be added back in by a change or something later yeah. in the project. Um, mm -hmm. You think about things that can't be added back in later on really should be taken, it really should you know, be ranked higher. So you kind of put that in the mix. Like, right for, example, you well, for example, you could, like for, for example, if you decided you were going to put trees and shrubs as an alternate. You could put that down as a lower alternate, regardless of the value of it, because you could add that at the end of the project as a change order at a later date. Right? Or plant it three years from now. Right. So and and so even though that has a higher value and people may really want that, yep. Um, it may not take precedence over something that would be more difficult to add back in, like flooring or flooring, which you, yeah, because flooring would happen before. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I would I would share with you that the value of the alternates is that you have the leverage in terms of the cost. If we do it afterwards, it's a change order negotiation. We don't have the leverage that we do to get. And the flooring is a tricky one because it's two filed subbidders. So you're going to yeah. take it away from resilient. You're going to give it to tile. So you're going to get potentially a not so great credit, and then maybe pay a little extra on the yeah. tile. Yeah, and, and, and changes with file subbidders. Ch file subbidders have more rights than uh, you know. Uh, we do a spotted <laughs> term. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah. Uh, it, they they have they have a lot of rights granted to them in mass general laws. We don't want to have to get into uh, any prolonged fights with the file subbidders if we can avoid it. Okay. okay. We're getting our best value. Bad big day. All right, so I'll put the uh, agenda together. It will be out on the town's website, and uh, it will be set for January 31st. Great. Okay, we see some members of the public here. Well, opportunity for public comment. Any discussion? I did have a, um, a couple of things which would only take a minute to read, but I just didn't want to forget anything about I just want to ask a question. Can, can we get your name and your address? Oh, sorry, Mary Lamont, 17 School Street. You just mentioned, and I, I don't know if it was a, just a, an example, or you said if it was proposed to put trees there, and then, you know, if they didn't do that, they could do it years from now. Is that a possibility that they wouldn't do the the trees in the oh, ground. Yeah, that was an example. That was an example. Yeah. That's not what we're, we're not going down that yeah. path. But we're, it was an example of, you know, to 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 get them to think, to get the committee to okay. think of things that you could always do at a later date. You know, like it, it, it's difficult. It's difficult to add drywall to the underside of a stairway mm -hmm. that's being used every day for egress at a later date. It's things like that. So uh, landscaping is almost always something that we always look at to help the budget because we never spend the entire contingency and it always comes back because no community wants to have a building without landscape. But it is always something that you know we 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 have to give that option. But I've never seen it exercised. I've been doing this for thirty years. And I, if you wouldn't mind, I someone mentioned that we might bring up the. Um, what would be done for the senior center? I live right beside the senior center, so if you wouldn't mind bearing with me while I just well, we to... actually this this committee is not going to decide what's going to happen to the current senior center. Okay. That that'll be another committee afterwards. There's a repurpose committee that's going to be developed, which hasn't happened at this time that I'm I'm aware of. No, the selectmen are working on a repurpose committee for not just the old the Bazell, but all the uh, build, vacant buildings in town. 
which would be this building also once the new town hall school admin comes into effect the roman house uh, for example so well i do have um a question about the town hall and the school building um i at the conservation um committee meeting we mentioned we were concerned about the wetland situation mm -hmm. but i am more concerned about the underground stream I would think that it would cost millions of dollars to divert that if, if in fact, when you start digging, <laughs> you dig into the stream because the water that's being, uh, they use the pump for to get out of the senior center just goes continuously. It's got to be coming from somewhere. And the same thing with the swinging school, that pumps continuously. So there's got to be water coming from somewhere, and that's a huge concern to me. Um, and, and I'm curious as to, why um i believe they rejected putting a library there but now they're allowing a three-story town hall building to go there and instead of putting it down on the farm they're putting it on the floor uh, so that i don't believe they rejected the location for the library i think it was the library so oh, uh, okay. yeah that I, you are for that so um and as far as uh, very familiar with the swain and the bottle well again uh -huh. go being a resident here, lifelong, and going to school in those both of those buildings, so I'm familiar. But I will let our OPM, because uh, there has been some testing that we've done there, and uh, I'll let him. So uh, a couple of things. First of all, this committee's been uh, together for two years plus, and uh, the location of the building on the site uh, was debated back and forth, uh, as well as the Whitfield site, uh, the St. Dorothy site, and this site where we are today in this building. So uh, the site location and the location of the building, you know, there were rounds and rounds of of, of, of uh, sketches and, and reasons uh, of doing what we did. On this particular building, the putting it into the hill the way that we're, the building is being put into the hill, is advantageous, believe it or not, because there's so much storage in public uh, town halls and it doesn't require windows. So that whole backside of the building is storage on that first floor. So there was rationale behind some of the things we were doing and we, it, it wasn't done in a vacuum, I, I guess is what I'm, I'm trying to say. With regard to uh, the uh, stream, uh, right out of the gate, the Swain School um, flooding uh, was debated by this committee and, and discussed by this committee. The Swain School had a full basement. Uh, uh, this building's just the, the first floor of this building is, is probably 10 feet higher than where the Swain School basement was. Our test pits uh, were all dry but the one by the Swain School. That one did get water and it got water seven feet below the uh, level of the parking lot. So we are conscious of the fact that there's water, there's a water grade there, but it doesn't really affect what we're doing. Uh, in conjunction with regard to anything that's coming from the hill down, we do have travel pathways and, and trench drains and pipes bringing that water to the storm the storm system. And the storm system is going to be collecting water on this site. You know, the amount of water that currently rains on that site today is going to be the exact same amount of water that rains on that site tomorrow, except for we're going to have a collection system that takes it in, stores it, and disperses it at a, at a lower rate instead of a, a rush during the storm. So, you know, the systems itself are have been designed to make it better. But we are conscious of the, the water level. I, I don't want you to think that we didn't know that there was water. And then oh, it's mean? also slab on grade. I don't know. Just that, the, well, that's. Okay. I mean, Probably when you said 10 feet, it. but the building is slab on grade. So there is no basement that's going into the ground, mm -hmm. similar to the Swain School that you referred to, uh, where, we, where uh, lunches were being served. And that's where we had our gym classes back then. In the basement. In the basement. Right. So that we are basically parking lot level. 
So it's not going to be in, in the ground. So it is this system, though, it's not like just one of the storms when they, when they do pump the water. I, I've been living there over 20 years, and it pumps for a month or more every day. And even when it's you're, dry, for every you're talking about the seniors. I'm talking about the senior and the swing school. So the water is there, but I don't understand how a drainage system can actually handle all that water when it keeps coming, you know, constantly, even when it's not raining or there's no storm. There's just water pumping out constantly. If there's no breaks. It, That's it, what... it won't be a pumping system here. I said yeah. so it's going to be just the burden around. We have water infiltration systems that'll be like there. Or a whole bunch of different things, but it's not going to be a problem. You want to make an attempt? We've actually, <laughs> I can try. We, we've actually, since we, we met with the Conservation Commission, um, uh, the outlet for the pipe that comes from the sump pump in the basement of, this, of the senior center was not something that showed up on the survey, and it wasn't something that I saw, my engineer saw from the water on site. So it's actually, I'm, I'm glad we heard about it when we did. Since we met last time, we've changed the documents. So we're picking up that pipe now, and it's going into the roof drainage system that we have on the building. Now, the roof drain system is separate from the system that's picking up the groundwater. The groundwater system is a, it's a separate system, and it actually goes to a different place in the stormwater management on site. The amount of water that's coming out of that pipe is relatively small compared with the size of the piping that we're putting in to manage the water around the building. So basically what we've done is, as Dan mentioned, we're creating, a, it, it's a lot like a French drain, a, a trench full of crushed stone so that the water can get into that and then flow around the building. But there's a pipe inside there that's perforated mm -hmm. and then wrapped with fabric so that it doesn't get silted up. So the water gets make its way into the pipe, finds uh, the path of least resistance, in other words, make its way around the building and then into the stormwater system. So we basically, basically have created a path around the building so that anything that's coming down from that ridge that kind of sits right behind the senior center, between the senior center and those residences on what's, what's Dory, 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 Dory Lane, Dory. there's kind of a ridge in there, uh, not very substantial, but it actually flows from two different directions down Dory Lane and then towards the senior center. Um, all the water that comes down off of that area and any, any of the water comes out of the sump pump instead of just plowing into the back of the building and the building acting like a dam, the building has a system that carries the water all the way around the building and that will into a small water management system. Okay, thank you. I have another question too. Is there any way I can be notified when the meetings are coming up? I, I don't use a computer, so I just find out these meetings at the last minute. So I'd like to know if there's any possibility I could be notified that, of any of the meetings to do with this. Uh, come on. Yeah, I mean, that, uh, you know the you know the next date of the of the conservation meeting. The, oh, the conservation February meeting is the seventh. It was saying the fifth. Seven, uh, seven, but I thought, I thought February fifth is the next. Uh, when is it? February fifth. February fifth. I'm sorry. No, oh, absolutely. And this committee will be meeting in two weeks. It, it's a Zoom meeting, yeah, so it's remote. Yeah. Now, what time February fifth? You don't mind. I don't know when we're on their agenda. We don't create that agenda. Is that seven o'clock? Yeah, I believe there's seven o'clock. Well, you know, we, we're probably on the latter part of the agenda because we're been adjourned. Right. I'm guessing. But we don't control their agenda. They're independent of us. And I do understand this is going on for a couple of years, but I assume that's why these meetings are held. So if there are any concerns, they can be right. Asked. Yeah, sure. We're going to do our due diligence to make sure it does not impact any of the abutters. That would be much we want to be good neighbors, and I know how I would feel if that was my property, too. So I would have concerns. George, just a second. She can, you can find out obviously the dates by coming to the meeting because you'll hear the dates here. Yeah, and she can find out if there's any other meetings that are scheduled for February 5th. Okay, thank you. 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 Thank promise you that somebody will call you every time it comes up. I don't want to set us up for failure. You can call us anytime. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Did they meet on Wednesday night? Right. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I think uh, it's the seventh. I, it might be the seventh. To yeah. Susan's point also, there is a, a board, display board up front that uh, will have all the meetings. 
So oh, you, right out here in the lobby. thing in the lobby. Yep. And Tom does a great job of keeping that up great. Yeah, and, and when construction part. starts on this building, you should feel free to make Tony your friend. And he's gonna be he's gonna be on the site, uh, as will Dan. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Don't make me go. <laughs> It might be the seventh, though. Yeah, I know the seventh. Yeah, Um. I just had a couple questions with us. Okay. My name is Candace Jenkins. I live over at Eight Drury Lane. Um, I don't know if this is the place for it, if you guys have even, you know, if this is even on like the docket for consideration, but um any ideas on like what the traffic patterns for the trucking is gonna look like, any sort of police detail, things like that. Um, just because obviously they use Drury as a cut through. During construction? Uh, yeah. yeah, during construction. So one of the reasons that we selected Consigli yeah. is that Consigli has uh, made a presentation to the town that they would be notifying the neighbors of all, okay. major, of all major things that are going to happen. Okay. And we're going to do our best to keep that whole area notified of things. Uh, you know, concrete trucks for a week, things of that nature. Yeah. Um, we uh it was one it was the biggest reason that considerably was picked because they focused on the neighborhood yeah uh during construction where the other uh contract managers although they all touched on it yeah. they they actually came and said this is how we've done it in the past and and everybody on this committee was Impressed, and I, I too would echo uh, the chairman's uh, thoughts, and you should make Tony totally a friend. Okay. Yeah, that was just going to be my question. No, this might be something with like, the parking for the the high school. Um, so has there been like a contingency plan for where the kids are going to park? So uh, the we are maintaining, I think it's 150 spots okay. during construction. We're planning on doing what work we can in the summers. Uh, to in those areas, jumping around so that that we can maintain that 150 uh, parking spaces. That was something that the school department about a year ago insisted uh, be in the plan, uh, and we went back and forth on the number of cars and tried to squeeze it all together. So a portion of that parking lot will be student parking, and, and a portion of that parking lot will be laid down space for the actual materials to build the building. Okay. And we do have members of our school administration and our school committee on this board. Okay, cool. On this committee. More so, I'm just want to make sure they're not going to go like parking on my street. Oh, oh I, anything. I, I, I think. Yeah, I think we have enough. I think we have enough area for parking okay. there. I really do. Yeah, it kind of seems like this. It's but I, I, I don't want you to think that this is going to be um a day at the beach uh it's not oh, no, there's going to be some inconveniences yeah. and we expect you to let us know yeah. and we'll do our best to be good neighbors and correct them okay all right and no, there's, there's no to your first point there's no plan to use drury lane none okay. zero or trucking that, that was that was yeah. actually yeah. No, as a matter of fact i i i, I saw totally right in the book but i know parking signs i saw them right in. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I feel like this was a stupid question, but like hours of construction, days of the week. Uh, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. <laughs> Are you coming up with me? <laughs> okay. The general construction day, for, the general construction day is uh, seven to three fifteen. Okay. Uh, that's general. Uh, yeah. There will definitely be days. Specifically, when we're pouring the concrete floors, which is three times, three or four times during the, the job, we'll, we'll be running uh, discrete machines probably till nine o'clock at night. Okay. And they, that, that'll that be very, very rare, but that will occur. Uh, we will notify the you know the building department and the police department when it happens, just in case they, they get calls. But other than that, it will generally be seven to three, three fifteen. Yeah. Occasionally, there'll be you know, stragglers. Once the building gets enclosed, uh, 
you may get some shifts that work and at night, but it'll be enclosed and quiet. So, okay. uh, but the, the heavy noise, the heavy noise for this project is going to be, uh, you right. know, uh, right off the bat as we're digging uh, through the ledge breaking and, rock. Yeah. and breaking the rock out of the ledge and, um, you know, putting the steel together sometimes can be noisy with the, with the, with the uh, pneumatic guns tightening the bolts. It's kind of an eerie sound. Uh, and definitely uh, the screen machines are just they're just an irritant, like a like a bee buzzing in your ear. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I think I think one of the things that we find on a, a lot of these projects that we have to police is language. Um, well, it, 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 you know, yeah. we're lucky it's not a school, but we're next to a school parking lot, right. and you know we'll we'll be worried about language with the workers we, we we will be notifying the workers it's not acceptable um the schools are going to worry about language for their kids and we'll worry about language for my workers but <laughs> we, we you know but i i i don't want to lie to you and say this is going to yeah. be going to be flawless it's not yeah uh, honestly as long as there's like just notification of like the big stuff I, like i work from home so so the day we the day around. yeah the day we signed the contract with the, the contractor for the exact amount of the project he'll start spending money on notifications okay. and we'll we'll set up uh, there'll be a website with 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 things on it too um and we'll, you know, we try to we try to be a little bit ahead uh, of where we are. We we're, we're doing the senior center right now. We've had two complaints since we since we started. Both of them have been uh, satisfied with the responses. But you know, we've got two complaints. And you know, they they they're living next to something that wasn't there, and now there's going to be something there. So as as George said, as a homeowner, you know, we, we understand there so, will be two way communication. Right? Awesome. That's that's and yeah. most importantly, if you're not happy with our responses or Tony's responses, you can always come to this meeting and say, you know, the OPM and the contractor are not listening to us. Okay. Right? Well, similar to uh, you had stated where I've seen your project just for notification before we did any cutting of trees or any yeah. of that, everybody was in order for all the year butters, a flyer went in their mailbox on their door, everybody Got, got to know that we were going to be there starting in yeah. I delivered them on a Saturday. They didn't get paid overtime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, you always have town hall. Yeah. You know, town manager's office. That's true. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. You guys all appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Appreciate it. <laughs> absolutely. Any other questions? No. All right. Any other questions? Go ahead. So, uh, my name is Donald Lysco. I'm with 16th School Street. Yep. So, um, you say there's going to be some ledge involved. How much ledge is it? Do you know? About three weeks worth of hammering. <laughs> About three weeks, weeks worth? Yeah. Yep. Seems a lot. Seems a lot. Yeah. It seems like I should have been avoided if the building was put in a parking lot. That's uh, well, there was a variety of reasons why we put it where we did, as, as Dan mentioned, but um, that's also based on the um, the borings that we did and the test pits that we did. Uh, there's a total of eight borings out there and three test pits. Um, but it's difficult to tell when you're doing it at a boring, especially, and that's the majority of the, of the holes that we dug out there are what exactly you're hitting when you're getting refusal. So they hit a big boulder down there, and it's very possible because they did run into some boulders when they were digging doing the test pits, and there's three of those. Um, so it could be that some of these borings that they did where they hit refusal, they're calling it ledge, but it may actually be a boulder. So we start digging and it may not be as bad as it is. We don't have a case scenario. We don't really know until we get in there and, and pull that cover off. So it would cost more money. Will the town be free to incur more cost if there's more ledge than you thought? Or? Well, there's contingencies built in as we talked about earlier today. So it's all within the budget. Uh, we try to plan for these things because we don't know exactly what's down there. We did punch big pouring holes down there. Very the similar to our senior center project. Right. We had a lot. We expected boulders in that flat land, and then we pulled out big boulders. There were some the size of SUVs, so right. they had to break them up. So we're not quite sure what's under there until we dig it up, but we must have built in the cover. Our problem manager, there would be no blasting. Uh, 
Still yeah, we have not. We do not plan on blasting. So we're not planning on blasting. Okay. Okay. How are these notifications going to happen again? Because it's my loss in the mail for the weapon. So, just just so you you know, the wetlands notification comes from the Conservation Commission. Doesn't come from us. Okay. okay. So we didn't send out those notifications. Uh, when we discussed. The contract with the general contractor, we discussed having uh, the ability for the neighbors to be notified when there were major changes on the site and prior to work on the site. Uh, we agreed that we'd do notifications by flyer uh, with, 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 the ability, with the ability for you to call if you have questions. So we're, we're going we're gonna to hit everybody with a flyer on that, on that L. Uh, around the uh, around the building and a few of the houses to the left, a few of the houses to the left of the site, looking at the site from uh, Middlesex oh, or the right. I'm sorry, right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So we're we're gonna hit everybody that we can, and you know try to try to stay in communication. We're not we we're, we're here to answer your questions. Um, I mentioned at the conservation committee that drainage on that corner. Of School Street, the backs up on this corner, the low end, and yep. drains over on this and the opposite side of the street. Yep. Is that going to be addressed as well? It, oh, we're not working in the street, um, but our civil engineer did look at it, and it does look like there's a low spot in the pavement over there. You know, where we are down at the bottom of School Street, and we're yeah, doing the drain around the corner. Right. I guess it's a low spot that collects water there. Yeah. That's outside the limits of where we're working, uh, so that would really be a town repair. Right. Um, that might be something you could address with the DPW. You know? Why don't Why don't we, uh, you know, make an attempt with the DPW if we can? Yeah, I'll talk to the superintendent. Right. Um, the three purpose committee you mentioned. How's that going to be established? Is that from the regular building committee? No, that's through the, uh, the select board right now. Are coming up with parameters how they want to do it, um, who they want on it. I know they talked about somebody from the historical commission, somebody from public buildings, and they have not come up with an actual plan yet of how it's going to be formed or how many people are going to come. It'll be on the select agenda. Is that where oh, yeah. it before? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. At some point? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Lou, would you mind bringing that up at some point? Because I've gotten a lot of questions about that. Okay. Also, I just see if we can get a time frame on the selectmen so we know for sure when, when they're going to Yep, so it take place. And what the Constitution of it can be, but if there's going to be citizens. Right. I believe they, they were yeah. talking about some citizens as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, residents. Yeah, there's a lot of us about that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any other discussion? No. <laughs> One quick question. Good. Um, in the summer, when they're going to. This is your sixth court yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> um, making up for the previous meetings or anything. Okay. Um, the, the whole swing lot's going to be uh, not during the summer when you're working on underground stuff. Where are the, the, the work is going to park that? I'm just curious. Within that space, be in the that apartment. is the lay down space. Okay. It'll be up to the contractor to determine what he's using for lay down space and what he's using for parking. And you know that's all part of what we call methods and means. Mm -hmm. When the contractor gets control of the site, as soon as the contract is signed, it's no longer town site; it's the contractor site, and he has free reign to do what he has wants to do within within the confines of the fence line. Okay. Right. Yeah. In the terms of the contract. yeah, the terms of the contract. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I can't do anything. Yeah, you know, I was asking, well, like in the high school, I remember the workers actually packed with a villain over hall, St. Thomas, St. Thomas, Saint Thomas is, um, while they were working on yeah, the high school. The high school. That's because we had a, excuse me, that's because we had our school building yeah. being right, built, right. and we had a school that was occupied at the same time. Okay, I was so just and, not and, and that's an awfully bigger project. Mm -hmm. Is there any possibility that they'll be blocking off School Street? No. You'll be able to. Well, we we do have to. Yeah, we do have to install a a water connection in School Street. I think at some point in time, and you know that's one of those things where we'll notify the neighbors when we're doing it. 
and I'll give you the schedule of how we're doing that. But I don't envision that even that will close the street. It will probably divert traffic to one side while we work on tapping the water. And then it would get plated at night and then, you know, filled and paved. I know you had another question. I don't remember your name. No, it's okay. Um, I, it's kind of a stupid question, but based on you were saying, like all the parking and the trucks and everything, once it becomes the construction site, mm -hmm. will any like parking anything happen in the current senior center lot, like on the back side that's between? The current the current senior center is a senior center. Right, right, right. It will remain a senior center okay. for the majority of the building of this cool. building. So by the time. Thanks. It's not the senior center. The new parking lot will probably be completed. Cool. Okay. Right? No, hey, that works for me because I'm right up against the, that lot. You're behind the senior center. Yeah, I'm right behind the senior center. So you're kind of saying the senior center is going to be taken down? No, no I didn't no. say that. What I said no, was the senior center the, end. the no, senior center will remain as a senior center. Right. So we don't have the ability to use their parking lot. Right. Yeah. It'll be yeah, a senior center to so move into the new senior center. Is what when is that projected to be finished? The new senior center? Uh, probably about 12 to 14 months. Only about one. Christmas dinner. Christmas dinner. I think I'm almost a senior. <laughs> Proud. I might be old enough to get out of it. Well, we know George will be there. He doesn't have a job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, motion. <laughs> second. All right, motion made by John Doherty, second by Paul Mellorani. Uh, roll call vote. Diane Allen? Yes. John Doherty? Yes. Jesse Finley? They're already at Rogers. <laughs> Jack Holloway? Yep. Dennis Kelly, yeah. Paul Mulroney, yes. Paul Ruggiero. Yep. All right. Thanks, Alfred. Yes. All good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.